I've been following this case in all the ins and outs. We heard what Barry Diller had to say. You heard uh, what Tim Cook had to say. If you were to handicap the outcome of this case right now, what would it be? Yep, so I definitely think in this case, Apple wins the battle. I still think there's risk of losing the war to the extent that the government steps in and regulates the commission rate. But in this case, I think Apple has a very strong case versus Epic Games. So, Tom, I'm with you. Uh, I'll call it right now for Apple, if I was the judge, just based on the market definition. I've always thought that Epic was not the right plaintiff to bring a monopoly case in this instance because a majority of the games are actually played on consoles. So you can't define the market as simply being on the phone. You said something very interesting just then, which is they might win this battle, but they might not win the war. What elements during this case came out that you think will be helpful or might put uh, Apple in jeopardy when it comes to the government trying to bring either a similar or, or, or somewhat similar kind of case? Yep, great question, Aaron. So in my opinion, Apple's own omission that is charging a lower commission for smaller scale developers, that in some instances for subscriptions is 30% the first year, 15% thereafter. In instances where they have a strategic relationship with Amazon, they're charging 30%. So Apple, by its own emission or by its own decision, charges lower rates on its app store. And I think that opens the case for the government regulation. Tom, though, one of the things, and, and this is where actually Barry and I, and we've talked about this, even disagree at this on this issue, which is they are the store, though. Uh, when, you can, when you try to compare it to a credit card, it's a little bit different. They are the store. They're the distribution mechanism. If you create a distribution mechanism, Shouldn't you be able to charge whatever it is effectively that you want? And all of these app makers are effectively uh, deciding that they are going to make their apps for specifically this store under these terms. And it's not that somehow the terms are getting changed out of their favor. They're getting induced into doing this at one rate, and then it's somehow, you know, a year later getting changed on them. And so I wonder, actually, from a legal perspective, whether you think there really will long term be a case. So excellent points across the board there. Uh, in, in particular, I have a hard time when you think about Apple's own data, that they have 30% share in the U.S. for smartphones and 15% share internationally. They are a store. As you pointed out, Epic Games can sell its product on Sony PlayStation. They can sell its product on Android devices. Uh, not everyone sells product at Walmart. Some people sell product at Walmart and Target. Uh, so I think they're a store, they're a distribution and if you look at the data, the 700 million to Epic and 100 million to Apple, I don't think that's exorbitant at all. OK, but let's say the government decides, you know what, this is a public policy issue. And there could be reasons to, to, to make the case. I'm not going to tell you there aren't. The question is whether they would be successful and if they are, what that looks like. And if you're investing in Apple, how you should price that in. Excellent question again. So the other testimony I think of for Tim Cook is before the House Judiciary Committee. You think about the excess influence Amazon, Apple, Facebook, and Google have on consumers' lives, and you think about the high margin revenue we're talking about, the non-hardware revenue, that's been a key driver of shares over the last 12 months. So I do think that 30% could go down, uh, and then that could have a negative impact on the stock. I just have a hard time believing it goes down from 30% to zero, for example. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.